Hello, I'm Emikara and welcome to Kaisha Level 1. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the absolute basics of Kaisha, including how to wear it, how to hold the sticks, and how to prepare yourself for playing the Kaisha patterns of the different Samba schools. So first things first, we need to wear this drum. Um, if you are a right hand dominant person, put your left hand through the strap and it's going to rest on your right shoulder. Right hand, right shoulder. Opposite, if you happen to be a left hand dominant person, you're going to put your right hand through and it's going to sit on your left shoulder. Now I'm a right hand person, so I'm going to be doing it on my right shoulder, just like that. Bam. Nice and comfortable. Good to go. Now when it comes to hooking in the snare drum itself, there's a couple things that you need to uh, keep in mind. You've got two sides, the side with the snares and the side without the snares. And in Brazil, we play with the snare side up contrary to what we do in the United States here. Now, you also have two sides uh, of connectors for the snares. And on this side, this is the tuning side that has the, um, the nut down here that allows you to tighten and loosen the snares. And this side is mostly just attaching it to the drum itself. You wanna hook into this side because if you go on this side, this tuning apparatus is just gonna dig into your thigh. It's very uncomfortable and it might detune your drum. So we go snare side up, we find the attachment side here and you're gonna hook into the lug to the left of it. And this will set you up so that the strings are nicely going away from you. You're able to play on either side of the strings without actually playing on them. Uh, this is very important. You do not want to play on the strings. You don't want to mess with them. You don't want to treat them like a guitar because they are a giant pain in the butt to change if they break or get worn down. And uh, yeah, it's better just to not uh, mess with them and let them be and survive as long as they can survive. Now, when it comes to your position here, you want the drum to be as ergonomic as possible. It is going to tilt. You want it to tilt a little bit if you try to play it flat. It's just gonna bounce all over the place. So I kind of use the crook of my thigh here as the resting place where the rim is just gonna sit right on the inner side of my thigh and it stays pretty secure right there. It's not gonna go anywhere. Um, you also want to have an appropriate playing height where you don't want to be T-Rex arms up here and you don't want to have hyperextended elbows down here. Find a nice medium ground you can see my left hand arm here has a nice, just a little bigger than 90 degree angle. My right arm, again, a bit of an angle, not too straight, not too up here, about like that. Bam. So I'm feeling comfortable. Now it's time to talk about the sticks. So the left hand tends to be the trickiest for most people who have not played um, traditional grip. Now the reason we don't just play like this is because the drum is tilted, because it needs to stay in that position. There's a lot of reasons the drum is tilted, but we need to have a way to play the drum with our left hand or non-dominant hand that doesn't involve us going like this, essentially. So this technique here, what you wanna do, put your hand out flat, place the stick here across your palm so that your thumb is on top and your fingers are down here. Now you're gonna cup your hand like you're cupping a softball or a baseball, bam. And you're gonna rest the stick on, how to show it in here, on the point of your ring finger, right at there, right where your cuticle and your finger come together. You're just gonna tuck your pinky finger underneath your ring finger. You're going to wrap your pointer finger over the stick and staple it in place with your thumb like that. And then your middle finger just kind of hangs out. You can kind of rest it on the stick so you're not uh, making obscene gestures with anybody. And from here, it is just a rotation. Think of it like turning a doorknob like this, just like that. You don't want to turn your hand over, play like that. You know, I've seen all kinds of weird stuff. You want your palm facing you, not up, not down, and cupped open enough that you could hold a tennis ball in there. You don't want to have your hand all collapsed like that. Nice and open like that. And then you get this rotation, Asi, bam. And this is weird if you're not used to playing like this, it takes a little bit of uh, time to get accustomed to that grip, but you'll get there like all things, you just gotta practice. Now the right hand, pretty straightforward. My way of showing it, like you're handing someone a letter, 
So let it stick in there. That's all you got to do. You want to make sure that your pointer finger and your thumb are on an even field right there. No fingers on top of the stick. You will strain your tendons here and no thumb sticking out. It does weird things as well. So even and then all of your fingers on the stick. No pinkies out. None of that stuff. And you want to engage. And here we're using our wrists like that. Not too much arm because wrists and fingers are much faster than arms. Having going up here will slow you down a lot. Just keep it nice and compact right down here. All right, all that aside, it's time to start actually playing this drum. Um, so playing position wise, we've got the nice tilt going on. Um, in Brazil, a lot of the time you see people playing with the back end of the stick because it's easier to get rim shots that way and the stick lasts a little bit longer. Um, so I like to play with my right hand using the back of the stick and my left hand using uh, the regular side. Um, up to you. If you want to play this way, it's fine. If you want to play that way, it's fine. You find what works best for you. All right, so first thing we're going to do is just get used to playing this drum. We're going to go right, left, right, left. Um, there's two main types of technique on Kaisha. One is where we're alternating the sticks, and one is where we're doing some double rights and just filling in the left. So we're going to build towards those techniques, but starting with just right, left, right, left, right, left. And let's just begin in a nice slow tempo. Right, left, right, left. So this may seem like not a lot's going on, but let's draw attention to a few things. You'll notice that when I'm not playing, my sticks stay about three inches above the head. While this stick is coming up to play, the stick is staying in that position. After I've played, the stick stays down there. This one comes up. So this right here, just a couple inches off the drum, is like your resting position, your home base that you always come back to. You don't want to be doing this. It's slow and awkward. Stay nice and down here. You also want to make sure that the stick is not bouncing. You're not letting multiple hits happen. You hit and you come off. Like the floor is lava. Hit and come off. Other things to check in on with your right hand or your dominant hand. You want to make sure that this is like a hinge. Your wrist comes up, your wrist comes down. We don't want weird stuff like this. We don't want any sideways swipes. Just straight up and straight down like that. Same thing over here. We don't want weird elbow motions. We don't want swishy, swashy things. Just straight up and straight down. And you can literally see the two bones in my forearm rotating. That's what you want to go for. Just like that. So keeping all those things in mind, let's just do a nice, easy couple uh, bars of right, left, right, left. Ready, and. Excellent. Now, um, let's talk about dynamics a little bit because this is going to play in. There are things that are called accents, which means you are accent accenting a note. You're playing it louder than the other ones around it. Um, so you need to be able to play. Well, you like to use heights rather than thinking loud and soft. I think of playing three inches versus eight, 12, all the way height kind of inches. So we're playing here. We can also go. You notice I'm not using my arms. It's literally just rotating the sticks and my wrists more rather than anything else going on. It's compact, it's in control, and it's hand to hand. So let's do this in groups of four, like four low, four high. One, two, ready, and go. And again, 
again, making sure that you're coming back to this home base where you're not sticking your sticks all the way up and keeping them there. Um, seems very rudimentary, but trust me, these basic skills are gonna help you a lot in the long run. All right, now let's look at uh, the ideas of the double right. Now there's a lot of these patterns that we play in Brazil are very dominant hand lead, um, where the main accents and material of the pattern is all played in the right hand, and the left hand is just filling in the spaces in between. So let's start with the basic idea of this, where right hand pattern is gonna be three, four. Let's fill in the spaces. Three, four. Three, four. Cool. Now let's try one more. Uh, let's go right, 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 single. Three, four. Let's add in the left hand. Three, four. So all of these ideas work on getting faster so you feel comfortable with being able to learn a pattern that is right hand lead and then just be able to insert the left hand in to fill in the spaces, whatever that pattern happens to be. All right, so now we're gonna combine these two ideas of hand to hand going right, left, right, left, right, left and this right hand lead of double rights filling in with the lefts in a pattern. Um, we're not quite gonna play the Salgado pattern yet but we're building towards the uh, Salgado pattern. So the first half is gonna be double rights, and then the second half is all gonna be uh, hand to hand. So just learning the right hand first, we're gonna go. Let's fill it in. Just the first half. the rest. So it's that combination of the second half, we're just doing these hand to hand, and the first half, double, double, one, back and forth. And Practice this pattern nice and slow because you're working on two different techniques at once um, and work your way up to more samba tempos. All the way up to. Now this pattern is not complete yet. We're missing a few little things in there, but for right now, level one, we're just gonna stick to this pattern, practice it to a metronome, and then we'll put the whole thing together in video two.